Hi everyone, welcome to Cape Bonnie Country. Thanks for stopping by. You might want to take a seat while I visit my mother's kitchen to create pumpkin dog treats. You will notice that the recipe is hanging from a clip hanger. My mother taught me this trick. It's a good way to keep your recipe where you can reference it. Hang it off any cabinet knob to keep it at eye level and away from spills on the counter. This is the actual recipe. Take a screenshot so you have it when you're ready to make your own treats. I originally found a milk bone and pasta recipe online about six years ago and followed it to the letter. Then we learned that brie, the chewini, is sensitive to wheat. I replaced the wheat flour with oat flour. I also experimented with different flavors. Then we adopted Tamir, the husky. She's lactose intolerant, so the dry milk had to go. Pumpkin puree, and I'm talking about 100% pumpkin, not pumpkin pie filling because that has spices in it that can upset a dog's stomach. Well, pumpkin puree aids dog's digestion. It helps cure upset stomachs and diarrhea. It kind of acts as a puppy Pepto. So this is the resulting base recipe when I decided that pumpkin and oatmeal was the way to go. Having made these treats repeatedly, I do not necessarily follow the recipe as written. I will note when I deviate from the written instructions, I am making a double batch of the base dough, splitting it in half, and making two flavors. In order to complete this recipe, you are going to need an oven, two baking sheets, and some parchment paper. Do not use waxed paper or foil. I will go over the ingredients as we work the steps. I make my own oat flour by running quick oats through my food processor. A full 42-ounce container will produce roughly 8 cups of flour. A double recipe requires 6 cups and a few handfuls for dusting the rolling surface, so you will have a little flour left over when you're done. The recipe says the first step is to preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 177 degrees Celsius, and to line the baking sheets with parchment paper. I have found that I can wait until I'm ready to cut the treats to do both of these things, so I'm going to start at step 2. Well, technically, I'm combining steps 2 and 3 into a single step. Add one third cup of softened unsalted butter, one quarter teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder into a large bowl and cream those together. If you're using a food processor or mixer, pulse it until creamy. Now remember that I am making a double batch of the basic dough, so I'm using twice as much. Here's a few tips. First, I found that butter does not upset tame your stomach, even though it is a dairy product. If your dog cannot tolerate the butter, substitute in three tablespoons of canola oil. I have found that using margarine instead of butter just doesn't turn out well, so canola oil seems to be the way to go. Second, I use salted butter instead of unsalted butter. That means I can leave out the extra salt. I also recommend allowing the butter to warm up and soften on the counter for at least an hour before you start baking. Now, truthfully, butter does not have to be refrigerated at all. Before refrigeration was invented, making butter and cheese were ways of using milk before it spoiled. I usually store my butter at room temperature in the pantry. I only refrigerate it during the hottest months of summer when it actually tries to melt in my pantry. Unfortunately, I did not have enough softened butter to mix everything nicely, so I placed my metal bowl in the oven for about three minutes to soften it up enough to cream it. You can place the butter in a microwave-safe dish and microwave it at 30% power for 15 seconds to soften it. Keep an eye on it. Do not let it melt completely. Next, we're going to add one cup of pure pumpkin puree. I'm using the whole 15-ounce can since I'm making a double batch. Two eggs, two tablespoons of honey for sweetness. You can use molasses if you'd prefer. And two tablespoons of bacon grease. The bacon grease is a flavoring that you can leave out, but I have found that the dogs really do like the bacon grease. Once again, remember that I am doubling the recipe and using more than I stated. Mix until well blended. Pulse until blended if using a food processor or mixer. Everything except the oat or rice flour and water has been added at this point. Now the recipe tells us to place three cups of oat flour, three and a half cups if you're using rice flour, into a separate bowl and fold the pumpkin mixture into it. I don't feel like getting a second bowl dirty, so I just add the flour on top of the pumpkin mixture and fold it all together. The resulting dough will be dry and crumbling. Add warm water or broth slowly while folding the dough together. You do this until the dough holds together. You might not need the entire half cup. 
The actual amount you need is determined by your altitude and whether you used rice or oat flour. I choose to use oat flour since oatmeal is gentle on the stomach and does help with itchy skin conditions. Rice flour can be used as it is generally considered one of the easiest plant proteins for dogs to digest. If you've made it this far into the video, please like and subscribe to Cape Bonnie Country. This channel is not possible without viewer support, so please feed the algorithm by writing yummy tummy in the comments. A well-fed algorithm pushes my videos out to more viewers and helps the channel grow. Now this part is not written in the recipe. At this point, I divided the dough into two roughly equal balls so I can add different flavorings to each. The first batch is chicken apple. So I'm adding two tablespoons of concentrated chicken bone broth and roughly a half a cup of crushed freeze-dried apple chips. If you want to use regular broth, well, you're going to use the warm broth in place of warm water in the previous step. Now I chose to use freeze-dried apples because we want to keep the dough as dry as possible. You can use natural unsweetened applesauce instead of the warm water in the previous step. I will explain why keeping the dough as dry as possible is important later on. Mix that all together with your hands. If it's too sticky, add a little more oat or rice flour. The second batch is peanut butter. Add a half a cup of natural peanut butter. I filled a quarter cup measure twice. Be careful which peanut butter you choose. Some peanut butters use xylitol as an artificial sweetener. Xylitol is toxic to dogs. It is derived from birch sap and may be listed as birch sap or birch sugar on labels. I use Skippy Natural Peanut Butter. This is not a paid promotion. I just find it's a good peanut butter and it doesn't have xylitol. Mix that together with your hands, add a handful of flour if it's a little too sticky. If you have not preheated your oven and lined your baking sheets, now is the time to do so. With my dough now flavored, I'm going to lightly dust my rolling surface and rolling pin with a handful of oat flour. If you've made a double batch of the same flavor, you can separate your dough ball into two parts. Use one part now, wrap the other part in several layers of plastic wrap, Stick it in the freezer for up to three months. Just take it out of the freezer and let it thaw on your counter for three hours before you're ready to roll it out and use it. Now we turn the dough out onto the floured surface and roll it out to roughly one quarter inch thick. That is six tenths of a centimeter. Notice that I typed that completely wrong in the recipe. It is not two and a half centimeters thick. We're going for six tenths of a centimeter. Personally, I split the dough ball into four sections and work each section individually. If I didn't, the dough would take up my entire counter when rolled out. Use a cookie cutter to cut them into desired sizes and shapes. I'm using a shamrock shaped cookie cutter for the chicken apple treats and a bone shaped cookie cutter for the peanut butter ones. Arrange them on a baking sheet, leaving about a quarter inch of space between them. That is six tenths of a centimeter, and again, I goofed it up when I typed out the recipe. Gather scraps together and re-roll them until no dough remains. If you have a special doggy occasion coming up, you can form the extra dough into a disc that's roughly a half inch or one and a quarter centimeters thick, and bake that like a birthday cake or a forever day cake. Place your filled cookie sheets in the oven and bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 177 degrees Celsius, for 35 to 45 minutes until the tops start to turn golden brown. If you roll them thin, they will need less time. If you roll them thick, they will need more time. Turn off the oven. Open the door slightly. You can use a dish towel or oven mitt to hold the door open. This allows enough heat to escape and to stop the cooking process. Set a timer for 15 minutes. When that timer goes off, reclose the door and leave the treats in the oven until the oven cools completely. This process allows the treats to dehydrate a bit more without burning. This is also why we keep the dough as dry as we can throughout the cooking process. Dehydrated treats last longer and are crunchier than treats that are taken straight out of the oven. 
store them in an airtight container. I like to separate them into dozens and place them in labeled zippered bags. In the pantry at room temperature, they will last about two weeks before they start developing mold. If you put them in the refrigerator, they can last up to eight weeks. Personally, I put all the zipper bags in my freezer where they can last up to nine months. Of course, I've never had a batch last nine months because my dogs eat them long before they go bad. I simply take out a dozen whenever I need them. Once again, the dryness determines how long they will last. Happy baking!